the ascension traditionally falls on a Thursday because the Gospels say 40 days after the resurrection, Jesus ascended into heaven. That number 40 is important, and think about, we just finished 40 days since Easter. The season of Lent was also 40 days long. How come Lent seems so much longer than the 40 days we just finished since Easter? That time just flies by. Numbers are important in the Bible, and the number 40, especially referring to days, seems to mean the amount of time necessary for us to learn something important. And so during the 40 days of Lent, we learn something important. And the church hopes that now, in these 40 days of Easter, we have learned something important. Even in the Jewish faith, if you were a disciple of a rabbi, you had to sit with that rabbi for 40 days before you would pretend to pass on his teaching. It would take you 40 days to simply learn one of his teachings so then you could pass it on. Well, what did we learn during the 40 days of Lent? Many things we hope, but most of all, the church teaches us self-denial and the church teaches us how to die to myself. So during Lent, we are learning to live more for the Lord and more for the will of the Father. We want to put aside our desires and we want to take the desire of God and put it first. That was Lent. What have we been doing in the 40 days of Easter? It seems to me that we are learning to trust in the power and the presence of the risen Jesus. The resurrection has a power that exists in the world today. The resurrection isn't just something that happened 2,000 years ago and it's over. The resurrection continues right here, right now, tonight. And we learn to trust the presence and the power of Jesus Christ. So it's interesting then that as we've been trusting his presence, on Ascension Thursday, we celebrate him leaving. Theologically, why did Jesus have to ascend and go to heaven? Well, if Jesus never would have ascended, then he could only be in one place at one time. And some people would say, well, but that would be great because you would see the body of Jesus walking around on the earth and there would be millions of people showing up to hear him and to see him. Well, that's great, but if he was in India and you are in Indiana, you miss him. So Jesus ascended into heaven so that he could be everywhere all the time. That's the gift of the Holy Spirit. We're getting ready for that now as we look 10 days from now to the Feast of Pentecost. We are getting ready for the presence and the power of a God who is everywhere all the time. So the body of Christ is now everywhere on the entire earth. You are part of that body because he ascended and went to heaven. The illusion of the story of the ascension is important. One of the stories says that he ascended in a cloud of glory. And immediately in the Bible, you think back to the cloud of divine glory that led the Israelites out of slavery into freedom. Do you remember how the Israelites followed that cloud and that cloud led them to an important place of freedom? Well, Jesus ascending doesn't just mean that he went up. It means that he went ahead of us. He's showing us where we're going to go. And it's not just up. We are destined for glory. We are destined for heaven. That is our true home. And this earth and this life is merely passing. So we want to learn and prepare and remember again, my true home is in heaven, that's where I'm going. Jesus went ahead of us to show us the way, that's where I'm going. Now the stories intrigue me because do you remember on Resurrection Sunday, the women came to the tomb and they met the angel. <coughs> they didn't recognize at first what was happening. And the angel said to them, why do you look for the living among the dead? He has been raised, he's not here. Don't look down into the tomb. Don't look down. On Ascension, one of the stories has the disciples gathered around looking up because Jesus just ascended, and then a man comes by and says, why are you looking up? Don't look down. Don't look up. Where are we supposed to look? It seems to me that part of the story of Ascension is we are supposed to look out into the world. We are supposed to look out and ready ourselves to go out to let the resurrection of Christ be present in the world in you and in me. The Acts of the Apostles were written by Luke. 
So in the Bible, we put the Gospel of John in between Luke and Acts. Really, we should take the Gospel of John out, slide together the Gospel of Luke and the Acts of the Apostles, because they're all one story. And in that story, we just heard the conclusion of the Gospel of Luke. The conclusion is the act of the ascension. In Luke's mind, the ascension is a hinge. It's a very important hinge. And it tells us a number of things. It tells us that the resurrection is not some event that happened 2,000 years ago. It's happening right here, right now, today. It's telling us that the important part of our faith is maybe not so much that we believe in Jesus, but that Jesus believes in us. And he commissioned us to go out and to do what he asked us to do. So then our faith is not sitting around looking at Jesus. Maybe it's Jesus looking at us, having incredible faith, and telling us, go out. Do what I asked you to do. And maybe the hinge of the ascension is that it's not so much a proclamation that Jesus is alive, but it's a proclamation that you and I, we are not dead. We are also supposed to be alive because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And that resurrection impels us to go out. That's why at the end of Mass, we do a very important thing. We don't give you pillows and sleeping bags and say, stay here. We bless you, and we commission you, and we send you out to go back to your life, back to the world, and proclaim and believe Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. Because he ascended, he is everywhere all the time. He's in your ordinary life. He's in every relationship you have. He's in every action and every word. So let's go out and live that. And I think if we do that, when Pentecost comes, we'll be ready for that spirit to animate us evermore and make us to be church once again.